Okay, so basically what we have here is the evolution of star habitable zones. I put this paper, it's up on VIX right now, but you see this thick green area around a star? This is the habitable zone. It's thick and it's far away from the host star. As the star cools and shrinks, the habitable zone narrows and moves further into the host. And as it reaches M star stage, which is basically red dwarfs, it narrows even more and it moves m further inwards towards the, uh, towards the uh, host. Now, let me remind people what stellar metamorphosis is all about here. The M star stage is right about there, meaning there's a different evolutionary uh, line where the star starts really dense and hot, expands greatly outwards, and then cools and shrinks. This means the habitable zone will evolve with the star itself to the point to where it becomes a brown dwarf and then continues evolving. And what I realized is that since the habitable zone shrinks, like here, that zone is going to fall into the star itself, meaning the area where it can sustain liquid water becomes internal. And Baz, that's why I had you make this diagram here. That's where Earth is. As the sun cools and shrinks, and loses mass and evolves on a simple diagram. Mind you, this isn't what establishment accepts. They think the sun's going to get bigger and expand and go all off the map. I don't know what the hell they're doing. But anyways, the star is going to cool and shrink. And it's going to move to where the Earth... I mean, the Earth is going to stay put. I don't know why this isn't focusing. Okay. The Earth is, is going to stay put there for the most part, unless... You know, another rogue object comes in there and, and changes things up. But it's just going to stay at 1 AU, which 1 AU is right here. Which means the Earth is going to sustain its habitable zone area all the way until the Earth or the Sun reaches an orange dwarf. And then once it becomes a red dwarf, the Earth is going to be too far away, so it's going to become a cold world eventually. So that's complete opposite of what establishment says, they says the, earth, the, the sun is going to expand greatly into red giant and go off the map. But what this means is that as the sun cools and shrinks and loses mass and dims, the habitable zone moves closer towards the star itself. And that's the external habitable zone. What happens here though is that the star continues cooling from brown dwarf to Jupiter-sized objects, to gray dwarfs, to blue dwarfs, to eventually you get ocean worlds, and the habitable zone becomes, or it, it becomes internalized because there's still a lot of heat in here, and the outer atmosphere of the star is really, really cold. So it can't sustain the external habitable zone, but it can do an internal one, meaning it can still have huge amounts of water inside here in its liquid form because the core is still really hot. So they stay, the water can stay in there. But then what happens is, is as that heat diminishes, the star can then say, hey, we got to get heat from somewhere else. So one of these objects, which are down here, can then orbit one of these objects and then go right back into a new external habitable zone, keeping the liquid water on the surface. And that's really cool because then that means we have double habitable zones. We have one that's interior in the star itself, and the old, very old star can orbit an external one and come up here somewhere and then continue on and, you know, um, continue its evolutionary track. And at the very end, you have asteroids, star guts, small dead worlds, and these don't have internal habitable zones. These are too cold and dead and rocky. But they could probably orbit one of these, ob one of these objects up here inside this area, and if it has any water, it could sustain liquid water on the surface for very short periods of time, maybe, who knows. But uh, basically, that's that's the paper in a nutshell. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it, you guys can read it yourself. But all, all this really means is that the, the stars, the, 
the habitable zone evolves with the star itself. Of course, the establishment already accepts that idea, but they don't have the correct way in which the star evolves. They have the sun, which is up here somewhere, going off and off into um, fantasy land, when really the sun is just going to become an orange dwarf, and the habitable zone is going to shrink and move towards uh, the center, towards the, towards the sun. The habitable zone is going to shrink and fall inwards. All right, yes. Um, I'll post this to the YouTube uh, page, and then I'll put yeah, I'll put this uh, on the bottom so you guys uh, can see it. Of course, I have to update it because Baz just did this um, uh, quite quite recently, and uh, it, it's very important to understand that you know you have internal and external habitable zones. Meaning, if we're going to be you know looking for life. It, you don't necessarily need an external habitable zone al alone. You can have an internal one, and, and life, life can sustain itself in, in, in this region right here and, and just completely ignore uh, the, this upper region. All right, all right, you guys. Uh, take it easy.